that takes a lot of time. It takes care. It takes one-on-one sometimes opportunity to voice their concerns, et cetera, to help them to see the positive or they might only focus on the negative. Tell me how you use theater to help train leaders, because I thought this was really unique and your approach to it. Yeah. So I am a firm believer that part of the challenge that we have as leaders is there's all these emotions that come into the workplace and we don't have a good vocabulary for speaking about those emotions. And so theater and this embodied work that I do allows us to create images, you know, using our facial expressions, our body. So if you are joining us live or on video, you'll see that I'm moving around quite a bit. I'll try to narrate if anyone's listening to this via audio afterwards. But I'm actually curious from the group, if anyone has had an experience where you went to deliver feedback or ask for something, and I want to know what you said to one of your employees. Here's one that may or may not be what you're looking for, but I'll give you a scenario. So there was a a fairly large project done across our organization that affected my division. I was a stakeholder, pretty significant stakeholder. So I was on a a call um, at the end of the project and they were just doing an update about, they went, they went live on an implementation and they were doing an update. I I was fairly quiet for just to, you know, at the call. And at the end of the call, I did some thank yous, just general thank thank yous. And I, I thought they were authentic. Just thank, thanking the team. And I had made a comment about, I said something like, I don't remember the specific words I said, but I said something like, I, I know that there were some stumbling blocks a- along the way, but ultimately um, the project was accomplished and it was accomplished well. And I'm really proud of this team and thank you. And it was supposed to be a genuine thank you, giving folks credit. And it was not received that way. It was received that Zach was being critical. And there were, you know, 30 or 40 people on the line listening. And I was pretty bummed out because it, it was supposed to be a genuine thank you. But because it, I mentioned some of the negativity just very generically, and that, that's what people hung on. So. Got it. Cool. Thank you so much for sharing, Zach. I think many of us probably can relate to that experience. So based on your scenario and your story, I'm going to illustrate a few images using my body. And we always talk about how an image is worth a thousand words right? So it helps us to kind of see between the lines of the emotional landscape someone might have based on something that's going on. So at the get-go, you mentioned that there was a big implementation project coming and that it was going to require a lot of work or we're going to require a lot of collaboration across different teams. Now, one person's reaction might be, and I'm going to create a static image for a moment, which I'll then describe, So creating an image of my reaction to I'm being asked to be involved in this large implementation project. So that image I'll create would probably be something like this, which if you like, if you're joining us via video, you'll see that I've got like a bright smile, like I'm excited, you know, my eyes are kind of open. And so you can tell that like, I'm engaged. I want to be here. Like that sounds good. Now. I probably wouldn't actually make that move (laughs) at work, right? So this is like, we over-dramatize it, we make it bigger so we can be more clearly communicating that emotional landscape. Another reaction by somebody else could be, right? And you even heard the sound in my voice, right? Like that, that exhale of, oh God, why do I have to do this? And you're going to have a whole kind of like rainbow uh, or spectrum of possible reactions just to that like announcement that we're doing this thing. Commonly, because I've spent a lot of time doing change management work, and I'm wondering if you experience this, Zach, on your project, but commonly when introducing a change, like an implementation project and new software and whatever, there's also like this kind of reaction, putting your hands up in front of your face, turning away, right? Like blatant resistance. And so even if you weren't, you know, part of the the scenario that Zach was describing, there's parts of those three different examples that I shared, the one that looked maybe excited or eager to join, the one that was exasperated and really frustrated, and then lastly, the one that was kind of literally putting up a wall because they didn't want to engage. So right away, we can start to empathize with Zach's experience. 
you know, we didn't, we can keep going down that we could break down his whole scenario and kind of break down different things, different reactions people might have had to that thank you. But if we imagine if someone is starting from the more negative or resistant images that I described earlier, then it's going to take a lot more actual energetic energy to shift from the, oh, I'm exhausted or I'm putting up a wall to like bring that down and try to get to the, I'm excited. And that takes a lot of time. It takes care. It takes one-on-one -on -one sometimes opportunity to voice their concerns, et cetera, to help them to see the positive or they might only focus on the negative. I think that's a great point because, you know, there is a negativity bias, you know, it's the old fight or flight. It's the way we're wired that yeah. no matter what, we always hold on to the negative. It's why politics go, you know, negative all the time because it's a more severe, more long lasting emotion. And I think it's an important piece to come back to that as a leader, all of our work is done through other people.